Welcome everybody to the next class in the Rational as Fuck training education course. I would like to remind everyone this stuff is a lot of nuance and is a skill-based art which does require a lot of practice and time put into it. I would like to also remind everybody the ideas expressed in these videos are for entertainment and educational purposes only. I am not a financial advisor and I would hope that all of you will take the time to practice these skills and define your talents before utilizing them in the market, which has great risk to it. So with that being said, thank you for sticking it through and I'm excited to share this one with you also. We'll see you in just a minute. All right, everybody, this is going to be the last indicator of our first chart. It will be our fifth indicator, and it is called the Reverse True Stochastics Indicator, the RTSI by Caretaker. So let's go into the scene. First and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and paste my version that I already have set up because it's going to have some settings and some key things that I want to go over. Um, it did not copy my line, but that's perfectly fine because we're going to put one in together. So if you want to come up to indicators and click search, type in caretaker and you will find, sorry, the caretaker, my bad. Okay, I lied to you. Look up true, I'm sorry, reverse true strength indicator. Now there's two versions. I, I, I have it saved to favorites, but I went ahead and did it this way so you could see it. So type in reverse true under indicators. They have an on chart version, which is fine, but I like to use the uh, straight up indicator window version. So you go ahead and click that. It's going to add it for you. Okay. Now, once that's added, come over to settings and we want to take a look at the inputs. Now, the stock inputs, I believe, are like 25, 13, 7. Okay. I actually like to use 21 uh, when we're trending a little harder just because I know that the EMA is very important. And then, since we use the 10 simple, I allow the 21 and the 10 to be my guys for the true strength indicator. That is not default, and I'm not sure how everyone else does it, but for me, this gives good results because I also look at the 10 and the 21 as ways to create crosses above the 55. So, if I have positive momentum and positive indication from my DMI ADX indicator and my stochastics indicator, then the signals I'm given on the TSI should be confluent with powerful moving averages that we currently use. Now the upper alert and the lower alert, I still use the same. The zero line is still at zero. Label offset, I like to bring it a little closer. So I use a four instead of a six. Uh, you could even use two. All that does is bring it closer to the line. And then decimal places require you to decide what you're looking at. So you want to move that to like four or five if you're dealing with uh, Ethereum to BTC or um, an altcoin that's under you know, 10 or $20 when you need the pennies, when the pennies matter, you want to use more decimal places. So with that being said, we go over to style. I really enjoy the light blue and the white design of most things. Same with purple. Probably because I watched Crown for so long, I got accustomed to seeing these things. So there is a high alert line and a low alert line, and those act as bullish and bearish control zones. But the scale high, which is just this line above the top, I, I don't. First off, I hardly ever see that. Second off, it's kind of hard to look at. So with that being said, we've got everything set up. Okay. You've got your inputs, 21, 10, 7, 25, 0, negative 25, 4, and 4. You've got your style, light blue, white, turn off scale high, turn off scale low. We can actually turn on the zero line right here, and then let's make that green. And now we've got exactly what we need. Okay, so what you're going to see about this indicator is the zero line is where the most powerful indications happen. So the TSI can cross at many different areas, as you can see, but it's not always when it's above the bullish control zone that it, it implies massive momentum to the downside. 
it actually more so implies just a loss of momentum in the short term, and that kind of implies consolidation depending on what your stochastics readings are and your DMI ADX reading. So the way I use the true strength indicator is to give me a higher probability and more confidence in the direction of my move, because even though I don't see it as an impactful indicator on a short-term time frame, from a logistical standpoint, it is very powerful. With that being said, if you use the true strength indicator for the reverse, sorry, the reverse true strength indicator for everything that you do, then you will always get great moves and great opportunities, but you won't always get the best take profit areas. So I more so use this to confirm my entry or if I'm going to hold a position, I will let this provide me with bias and the most powerful signals happen around the zero read. So we understand now how the stochastics work, right? And basically this is very similar when it comes to the plotting of stuff. This insinuates you're in a bearish control zone once you're below it, even though oversold and overbought is really nuanced and up to interpretation. It is one of those things where you will see a, um, a rise usually just because there's exhaustion in the market. But we see that with everything, whether it's stochastics or whether it's DMI, whether it's moving averages or, you know, volume, volatility, Bollinger Bands, everything likes to reset over time. So with that being said, I don't necessarily use these as signals for major momentum. I use these areas as potential areas where we might consolidate. So if I see the TSI starting to get exhausted and then I close my next candle under my stochastics target and I'm starting to see my DMI and ADX flatten out, then I might believe we're going to consolidate or pull back to the nearest area of support. So even when I'm using the TSI, my, my areas of confluence, my areas of take profit, my areas of shorting and longing, all of them are still based on the EMAs, horizontal support and resistance, and expectations being set from the DMI and the stochastics. It's just that the true strength indicator seems to give us these really interesting plays when the crosses happen on the zero line. So the zero line, the green line, when the true strength indicator gets to the green line, and has a cross below, that's when you see the momentum. Now, when it gets here, that doesn't imply a bounce. It implies some sort of consolidation and, you know, exhaustion being tested, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just like when you see up here, it doesn't imply a sell-off, it implies consolidation. But what does happen is when you cross here at the zero line, the move comes. You want to see? So check it out. We got to find a place where we recently crossed at the zero line. So right here, holy fuck. Okay, okay. You want the best example ever? Check this out. DMI and ADX have flipped positions and DMI minus has become dominant with a strengthening trend. At the same time, these stochastics have hit a low single digit read and the, I'm sorry, the volatility on the stochastics have hit a low single digit read and the stochastics itself is starting to get exhausted inside of the bearish control zone. Basically what people refer to as overbought, even though I don't like that term. At the same time that these confirm on the next candle, which is the next day, which is the indecision candle on May 13th, where you thought maybe it would bounce, it turns out the TSI actually crossed to the downside on the zero line right there. <laughs> and we saw a continuation from a candle close of 49,694 to an ultimate low within a few days of $30,066. Okay. Now, what's interesting is it actually hasn't crossed back above the zero line and it's getting close to doing that here in the next day or two. If it crosses above the zero line, at 34 if it sees continuation essentially here we go so um upper alert line is 45,000, which would be a very overbought trend right here we're now at the zero line with continuation above 34,500, which implies closing the daily above 34,500, 
is going to continue the cross of the two moving averages. And they don't even have to cross at the zero line. They need to basically break out after being crossed. So right here, they cross to the upside. If they can see continuation, then that will start to shape up our uh, idea when it comes to the stochastics. Stochastics continue to rise outside of the uh, bullish control zone because that does happen sometimes. Basically meaning the move's coming to an end soon. That doesn't mean a correction. It means it's going to slow down soon. But what we have is we've got volatility halfway through its mark. So it can still go up another 20 30%. Not the price, but the volatility. And then we have, I should say points, another 20 or 30 points. We have stochastics that could still be bought into a few more. I mean, as long as you're closing dailies above the price, which right now is 35.5, and that'll change maybe to 36, et cetera, et cetera. As long as you're holding that, momentum will only get exhausted whenever you start to close below it. So then if the TSI is lining up, it's $1,000 lower than the stochastics. That gives me faith that it, even if I can hold stochastics, TSI momentum will build and I'll cross above the zero line. And today is July 27th. So if you're watching this in the future, you can go to July 29th and July 30th and you can see if the DMI plus started going positive again within the next day or two from, from today's date, which is again, July 27th. If that happened, while stochastics continued to increase for another couple days and TSI moved above the zero read on the 28th, then by the 29th, 30th, maybe even August 1st, whatever it might be, sometime in the next few days, because you know it takes four to seven days to confirm a signal, um, we need to uh, go ahead and examine the chart and see if we saw continuation up to 41,400 or if we went all the way to the upper alert line at $45,000. So it'll be very interesting to back test this in a few days and see where we're at based on this video and this time in history. But let's go back a little bit further. Right here, we saw them actually perform a cross on the zero read to the upside. And it took us from, this is all daily time frame, by the way. But this was a candle of 35,000, you know, and it was up until... I mean, when did it cross back below the zero? Right about here on April 20th, which is which is when the lines crossed. So look, it didn't actually cross on April 20th. Let me find April 20th. So on April 20th, it didn't actually cross. So it crossed up here, right? But when it came down, it started to signal us that we were fucked and it came back up and then it did cross on the zero. So we could even see something like that here because this is this right here is the opposite of this right here. So now we're seeing it come up. We could see a little bit of consolidate, see it touch the zero line, and then cross to the upside. So anything can happen if it gets can like. So the way this would do that without becoming bearish is you would just consolidate to where this price keeps rising until a point where the price you're currently at is above or below it. And that would be how you would get your first signal to maybe start to uncross and then confirm a cross back up. Again, we can't know because the future's not here. But when it is here, we'll be able to examine this and see how this played out because this is very interesting. On July 26th and July 27th, it's looking a whole lot like the reverse of July 21st or April 21st. And we happen to know April 21st was one of the first signs that we were going to end up getting a top and pulling back. And then by May 11th, we confirmed that on the TSI, right? But now if you were relying on the TSI to take profits, well, you'd, you, you'd be in a pretty good position, but you would have missed all this down here, right? So you could just start to backtest this and say, you know what, every time I get below that line, maybe since that's when volatility decreases, perhaps I could even use trend lines, right? So like maybe since that's when volatility decreases, that's when I should take my position off and wait for confirmations. On what? Not the TSI, on the DMI, the stochastics, and your FIB areas that are confluent with your EMAs and your support and resistance. So hopefully this helps everybody get a good understanding of why I like this indicator and basically how it's used. If you have additional questions, you can ask me. I did type up a small little overview to kind of put my thoughts into a simpler format after I showed you the indicator. So now that you understand that we've got a bullish control zone, we have a bearish control zone, 
and then we have a signal line at zero. When they cross below or above, they usually have a pretty solid reaction the higher the time frame. As you go back into lower time frames, you'll see it happens more frequently, but the moves are a lot smaller. This one goes from 34,677 down to 31,589 before you dip below the purple and then come back up. So we can use the purple as an opportunity to say, you know what, I'm in the purple. Plus, you know, at that point, your stochastics would have been starting to cross. So you could have taken profits waited for DMI and ADX to start to confirm the cross, wait for stochastics to gain momentum, get some sort of four hour close above one of your known areas of support or resistance, and then just go long. And you would have been in anywhere from, you know, 30,800 to possibly, even if you waited all the way to fucking here at 32,300, you still got to go all the way above $40,000. So this is very powerful. And this is the four hour signal. Okay. That doesn't even have, so imagine how well we've done based on four hour signals so far. Well, what if this daily starts to play out? So that's why anyone who comes to this in the future past July 27th of 2021, you'll be able to watch, you'll be able to come back to July 27th in the indecision candle, and you'll get to see if the following days had a follow through or a breakdown. And if these wound up testing each other at the zero line and confirming across to the upside, and if DMI plus turned positive with it, and if you kept above your, you know, 55 EMA on the daily, keeping your positive stochastics. And I I know you can't really see the DMI and stochastics. The point is I'm trying to show you the TSI, but I do hope that everyone understands how this works and what's going on here. And with that being said, I think that that is the end of the TSI video. I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick reading of something that I wrote, and hopefully this helps break it all down. <clears throat> Reverse true strength indicator, the RTSI. Also, I'll try to remember to provide a link so you can go look at caretakers page and get a little bit more of a breakdown. Now, here's what I wrote to make it simple for everyone to understand. Let the signal influence you based on the trend and other momentum indicators. Think of it as a second opinion that carries extra weight. If you're crossing the zero line or showing support at a continuation price on the TSI, like right now would be 34,447, this implies fresh momentum in the direction of the trend. So if you've got fresh stochastics and fresh DMI or a fresh breakout or a bullish four-hour close above an EMA or support resistance and your TSI is still rising, that's providing bias and probability to your cause. And once you get above the zero line, that adds confluence just like an RSI or just like a TSI or just like anything that you're familiar with, okay? I'm sorry, not a TSI, I'm in a DMI. Um, so... Basically, we're using the EMAs and the horizontal support and resistance and all that stuff as our take profit areas. We're just using the TSI to confirm the weight of our stochastics and DMI readings, in my, in my opinion. It's not the purpose for it, but it's the one that I have found the most profitable and the most useful. When failing to keep the TSI up, use it as a potential early warning sign, which we can kind of see, and I haven't back tested this or utilized it enough to guarantee it, but we can see there is a correlation to when it goes below this bearish control zone that you tend to see some sort of slowing in momentum and opportunity to the upside. Even if you fail, it still tries to bounce, and we need to pay really close attention to that over time. It didn't read that well with my previous settings, but with these new settings. I'm, I haven't had as much time to back test, but I'm telling you, it looks great. Uh, with that being said, if you want to wait on the TSI completely for entry and exit, it's incredibly reliable. But like I was saying, you're going to get a much lower percentage, like, you know, where you could predict or not predict, but anticipate with good probability a 20 or 30% move. If you rely fully on the TSI, you might only get 8 to like 15% of the move. And that's being very generous. Now, if we can start to use the purple and the blue area to gauge things, that'll make it more interesting. So we will be paying more attention to that uh, in the future. And I hope that everyone learning today remembers me saying this because on streams, we will talk about it. And that's how you guys will develop even more skills from knowing this stuff now. Um, basically... 
if you have a momentum defined trend on higher highs, higher lows, lower highs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, whether it's uptrend, downtrend, or consolidation, this is also just giving you an increased probability of breaking the nearest known support and resistance. So if you don't have a clear momentum direction or positive signal, negative signal, et cetera, et cetera, from everything else, but you are at least near support and resistance, the continues rising above or continues falling below targets actually can provide a little bit of foresight that you may or may not break that area. When we accompany that with something like Bitcoin dominance, we start to get a much better understanding of our potentials. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get off here. Now, there is one thing I want to throw in at the very end, very end. I know you're still listening. If you made it through this, you deserve to hear this. I'm not sure I mentioned it in the first two videos, and I will try to bring it up a little bit more to make sure everyone hears it. But I did forget to mention that quant firms have done data analytics that show when you get signals on specific candle closes or from momentum indicators like these on specific time frames, they can take anywhere from four to seven uh, candle closes to play out. So if you've got a strong signal on the four hour, it can take one or two days for it to actually play out or come to a full rejection. And with a daily, it can take anywhere from half a week to a full week. And in some instances, we've seen it even take 10, 10, 11 days. So do remember the consolidation phases that last two months. That is not the same thing as trending moves. But do realize that trending moves with confirmations will have to have, you know, consolidation phases to prevent volatility from getting in crazy and preventing people from having too great of an entry option and all the volatility, et cetera, et cetera. You do have to kind of test liquidity when you're doing this stuff. So remember, when we get powerful signals on our daily candles or on our TSIs or any of our indicators, we want to make sure we understand that we're looking for confirmations or rejection signals over the next four to seven candles. Now, that doesn't mean it can't break out on the next candle. It just means that it can take four to seven candles before, for instance, you're back above here or back below here, right? Now, when it comes to these bullish moves, you are facing the downside potential because all of these moving averages and all of these signals that are keeping you bullish are raising. So at some point, if you don't see continuation, you get stuck below all of these and then that provides negative connotation and you get one more opportunity, like one more day to get above them. And if not, then that signal tends to play out to the downside, right? So just keep that in mind, guys. And with that being said, I will see you on the next lesson. Take care.